Welcome to the shop, Steve here at SKS Props, and in today's video, I'm going to be making a pair of my favorite lightsaber hilts from the Star Wars universe, specifically Ahsoka's lightsaber hilts from Star Wars Rebels. Now, these are made completely out of my HD foam, which you, of course, can find over at Blick Art Materials, which means they look absolutely awesome as display pieces. If you're ever going to use them for cosplay, they are extremely light. They weigh next to nothing. The other thing that's great is I made blueprints for these and they are available on my website so you can download those in case you'd like to build your own set. Now I want to show you guys all the steps that it takes to put these together so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I do is print off and cut out the templates that I created in Photoshop. These designs will make sure that all my pieces are to scale and all my details are exactly where they need to go. I start off with the primary lightsaber template. This is transferred onto some 10mm HD foam. After the template has been drawn on, a second piece of 10mm foam is rough cut to match the first. Contact cement and superglue is applied then to each one of these pieces, which will be sandwiched together to get the correct thickness. These foam pieces are firmly pressed together until the adhesive is cured. Now the template is ready to be cut out. I take the foam block over to my bandsaw to be cut out. Now if you don't have a bandsaw, it's no problem, just use your utility knife. For the in-cut detail on either side of the handle, I start off by removing the center of this template. What is left is transferred onto some 2mm HD foam with a pencil and cut out with a scalpel blade. Now I did put in a new blade to make sure that these cuts are as crisp as possible. You really only get one shot at this because the build is very clean. After the 2mm foam pieces have been cut out, they are then lightly traced onto the foam block so I know exactly where they need to go. To continue to keep this build clean, Bob Smith's super glue is going to be used to adhere these to either side. I use my finger to lightly roll the foam down making sure not to trap any air bubbles, and then the same process is repeated for the opposite side. So now I have an even thicker block of foam but all the corners need to be rounded, and to do that I'm going to use my belt sander. Same scenario as the bandsaw, if you don't have a belt sander it's no big deal, you could rough cut it with utility knife and still clean it up with your rotary tool. Here I use a medium grit sanding drum as well as a smooth sanding drum to make a gradual transition from the 2mm foam to the 10mm foam. A sanding block is used to do a final pass to buff the surface and then it's on to the details. I cut out the diamond templates with some shears and then transfer their position onto the handle with a pencil. These diamonds are cut out of some 1mm HD foam. Now I know Blick doesn't carry my 1mm in stock, but I do still have some in my warehouse, so if you're interested in picking some up, feel free to contact me. Some Bob Smith super glue is used to attach the diamonds directly to the handle, and because I had marked them with a pencil, there's no guessing where they go. Once this side is complete, the diamond details are also applied to the opposite side. Now this cutout for the handle is a little tricky. I start by marking out how much of the material needs to be removed. This chunk of foam is carefully cut out with the bandsaw making sure not to mess up the handle that I have so far. And then once the material had been removed the surface could be cleaned up with a rotary tool. Now to make the handle inlay I'm going to be using a 20mm HD foam round dowel. This dowel is first cut to length and then cut in half. As you can see, it needs to be tapered at the top and the bottom. To do that, I use my rotary tool, and I remove just enough material to give it a slight curve at either end. It's a little back and forth to make sure that it fits just right, but once I'm satisfied, I glue this into place. And that's a really convincing way to make it look as though this is inset into the handle. Now, if you don't have any 20mm round dowels on hand, you can cut a strip of 10mm HD foam and round it over with your rotary tool as well. For the horizontal ridges that will be on this piece, I'm going to be once again using the 1mm HD foam. I mark the placement for these with a pencil, making sure to use my template as the reference. Once they're properly spaced, I glue down one end and then wrap it around the half dowel. Now for the ridges at the very top and bottom of this piece, they're going to need to just be cut to fit. So I use some shears and eyeball it till I've got the shape right. Now I'm going to move on to the strip at the very bottom of the handle. The outline of the handle is drawn onto some 4mm HD foam and then traced around to get an approximate size. Rather than cutting it and then gluing it on, I decide to glue on more than I need and then refine that shape using my rotary tool. This is an easier way for me to control the spacing all around this detailed piece. Now it's time to move on to this ribbed piece at the bottom of the handle. I start by making a basic rectangle template and transferring that onto some 2mm HD foam. And then using a very tiny dot of glue on each one, I glue them all together. 
This will give me a stack of foam that I can uniformly shape using my rotary tool. Once this shape is correct, all these pieces can then be pulled apart and set aside. For the layers in between these, I do the same process but make the block a little bit smaller. These pieces can also be pulled apart and set aside. Now all these pieces can be stacked on top of each other, alternating from large to small. In the end, I had to cut out two more of the large ones, so I had eight large and six small, but it gives a really cool alternating effect. I created two of these blocks, one for the primary lightsaber and one for the Shoto. The next part I'm gonna create will be the clasp for the belt clip. This template is traced onto the handle and onto some six millimeter HD foam. The additional foam detail that's in its place can be cut off with a scalpel blade and cleaned up with a rotary tool. Now I need to punch a hole through the top of this and lucky for me, my buddies over at Ashen Warrior Props made me some hole punches. But this same technique can also be applied by sharpening some small brass or copper pipes. For the next knob down, I use a 15 mm hole punch on some 4 mm HD foam. And to get my rivet-like detail, I press firmly into the foam with a ballpoint pin. To create the knob on the opposite side, I use my circle jig to make a 1 inch perfect circle. To add details to the face of it, I use a hole punch to score it, and then I use the end of a sanding drum on my Dremel. The sanding drum is then used to knock down the sides, and a heat gun is used to open up the slit from the hole punch. It ends up being a pretty convincing greebly for the side of the lightsaber. This button is super glued onto the side of the handle, and the details on the bottom of this are starting to look great. Next, I'm going to make the ridge at the top of the handle. I mark where this is going to go and cut the whole top off. That's easier than creating an entire different piece to match the curve later on. This 2mm foam piece is rough cut with some shears and then glued to the top of the handle. Once the super glue is cured, the top of the handle can once again be attached. Now the transition looks seamless with the ridge in between. Before I start working on the details for the top of this lightsaber, I go ahead and start to replicate the Shoto. Just like the primary hilt, all the steps that I used to create that will be used to create the smaller version. So that means, once again, I've got to block my foam, add my 2mm details, and I can glue on the bottom piece that I had created earlier. And here you can see the scale difference between the primary hilt and the Shoto. I go ahead and create the belt loop for this one as well, but I messed up a little bit and I took away too much foam. So to correct my error, I just filled the gap with some foam clay. Which just goes to show you, even people that have been doing this for years still mess up from time to time and it's not a big deal. There's always a way to fix it, or foam's cheap, you could always start over. The lower details on the handle are created much in the same way. The button on the bottom of this one is a little bit smaller, but I still use the end of my rotary tool to give it that extra detail. I used a small hole punch once again to create the power switches for either side, and I'm constantly looking back at my reference images to make sure that I'm putting them in the right spots. The cool thing is that it's all these little intricate details that make these lightsaber hilts come to life. Now it's time to work on the top of the hilts and I knew this part was going to be a little more challenging. I start by cutting two inch and a half circles out on my circle jig. These circles are rounded over with a rotary tool and taper to a one inch circle on the bottom. This will kind of give me a half dome for either hilt. Now material in the top of the hilt needs to be removed. I use my template to first mark out how far down the cut goes, and then using a sphere stone bit, I remove enough material that the half dome fits in perfectly. The half dome on the longer hilt is glued in first and it turned out exactly like the concept art. Additional material is removed from the smaller hilt, and that dome can also be checked for fit and glued into place. Going back to my circle jig, I cut out a 1 and 5 8 inch circle. This will be glued to the top of the smaller hilt as part of the admitter. The same size circle is also cut out and attached to the end of the longer hilt. Now the longer hilt has some additional details at the top. So I start by gluing on a 1 and a quarter inch circle. For the beam admitter, I'm going to once again use some 20 millimeter HD foam round dowel. I cut a small piece off to check for fit and it looks like it's going to work out great. So I grab my center finder and mark the very center of the top of the hilt. Next I use a Forstner bit that's the same size diameter as the dowel to cut away some foam. The dowel now snugly fits into this recess and I go ahead and take a smaller Forstner bit and also drill this out. To clean it up I use the same sphere bit on the end of my Dremel rotary tool and a heat gun to seal it off. 
For the smaller hilt, I once again use the center finder and a Forstner bit to drill out some of the foam. And remember the knob that I made for the larger hilt? I actually made two of those because I was going to use one of them for the top of this lightsaber. For the belt clips, I purchased two 3 quarter inch D-rings from the hardware store. I used a utility knife to carefully cut back the foam piece that I had glued down earlier. After super glue was added, the D-ring could then be inserted and the foam could be glued back down. This same process was repeated on the Shoto as well. Now I didn't want the hills just to be laying around on the shelf. I wanted to create a little custom stand for them to sit on. I created a basic design on Bristol board and then checked for fit to make sure that it would work. That design was then transferred onto some 10mm HD foam and then cut out on my bandsaw. Because these hilts don't weigh anything, a foam stand is perfect for this application. To brace the middle of the stand, strips of 1 inch by 4 inch 10mm foam are glued to either side. I ended up placing two on the bottom and one against the back wall and that was perfect reinforcement for these two hilts. Since building is complete, I use a heat gun on all the foam pieces, and then I start to prep and seal the surface with Plasti Dip. Two light coats of Plasti Dip are sprayed onto each hilt as well as the stand. After the Plasti Dip had cured, Rust Oleum Hammered Metal Pewter was then lightly sprayed onto each one of the hilts. This will be the base color my hand painting can be applied to. The hilts are then left to dry and cure so I don't have any off gassing issues. My base color for the primary hilt is going to be FX brand chainmail. Now these FX metallics are very thin which is why I did a rattle can base first. This paint just allows me to add an additional reflective surface to the foam. Now these hilts are two different shades of silver. One is lighter and one is darker and then they mirror the opposite. So for the smaller hilt I'm going to be using FX brand samurai sword along the body and in the end cut of the longer hilt. As a final highlight, I'm going to be using Liquitex Heavy Body Iridescent Rich Silver. This paint is specifically more opaque than the others, so I don't use it everywhere, I selectively pick highlight areas. But you can see that in these LED lights, it does give off a nice sheen. This iridescent silver is also used on the end cut of the smaller hilt, and along the top of the emitter. Now I didn't have a darker silver color for a highlight, so I ended up mixing FX brand Gauntlet with the iridescent silver to create my own custom color. This was painted on the surface of the smaller hilt and on the end cut of the larger hilt. You can see in the light what a reflective color difference the two shades have. For the lightsaber handle grip, I'm going to be using FX brand Carbon. This color is painted onto the 1mm foam strips as well as the ridge details and the button housing. Going off the color guide that I found on the Star Wars Rebels homepage, the half dome at the top of this hilt is kind of a copper and gold mix, so I mixed the two FX brands together. This color worked out fine, even though it was a little thin I had to do two coats, but I painted it onto the half round, the power switches on either hilt, and the lower knob on the smaller hilt. Now I just need to go and do some cleanup. So I start by using the iridescent rich silver and dry brushing that over the ridge details at the bottom of the hilt as well as the D-ring. Pure iridescent rich silver is applied to the top of the emitter and the same process is done to the other saber. Last step was to paint the power switches on either hilt with the FX brand carbon using a detail brush. So you all can see the steps that I took to put together Ahsoka's lightsaber hilts from Star Wars Rebels. Now, this wasn't necessarily an easy build, but I love a challenge from time to time, especially when I have to look at complex curves and figure out how am I going to make that out of foam. Now, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family. And remember, if you're building any of my builds or using HD foam, be sure to tag me 
at SKS Props on Twitter and Instagram because I want to see your creations. Until next time, build your best with the best. HD Foam.